So this video is about not thinking about computer stuff as computer stuff. And I think that uh, most people who are good with computers are good at this. And just a lot of terms, computer terms, come from just regular everyday stuff. But once you apply it to computer stuff, it blows some people's minds. And it's so funny because you talk to people who claim they don't know about computers and really when someone says, oh, uh, computers are too complex for me, I'm no good with computers, it's because you've been trained to think that. And whenever you see something computer related, you overcomplicate it. And so that's what I want to talk about. And I'm going to give you an example. I mean, I can go on and on. It's like every time I have a conversation with someone who doesn't know about computers, it's like you talk to them. And they're like, oh, what does that mean? I was like, well, let's say we weren't talking about computers. What would it mean then? It means the same thing in computers. So, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, yesterday I was talking to somebody. And so a couple days ago, he needed some photos. So I texted him a link to an album online which I prefer to do because you text photos and the resolution just goes to crap. So I sent him, and it's a bunch of photos and a video. So I sent him a link, I said, and he needed to send that to somebody else. It was pictures of something that he had to send to a worker. And I'm like, okay, here's the album. Send it to whoever you need to send it to. He texts me back that he's trying to download the, video, the, the pictures and the video so that he can forward them. And I'm like, no, no, just send him the link. Why would you go through the extra steps? That's another thing. People who who don't know, don't know how to use computers, overcomplicate stuff. It's like, here's the link, just copy that and send it to whoever needs it. Don't go and download the photos and then re-upload them to send it to him. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. But the conversation went beyond that. So it went through this thing and we're texting back and forth. He's like, I can't send him these photos. I'm trying to download them. I don't know how to download them. And I'm like, just send him the link. I don't know how to do that. So I said, so, okay, give me the guy's phone number, so then I send him the link. And then later on that day, I see the guy that I'm talking with. And I said, I'm sorry that you were confused, uh, but I, I just copied and pasted what you said and sent it to him. I don't know uh, what the confusion was. And his response was, and people say stuff like this, and I just don't know how to respond at the time because it just doesn't make, it so doesn't make sense. He goes, well, I think of a link as the internet, but you're sending to me in a text, and the text is an internet. And I was just like, I don't, I, I, at the time I didn't know how to respond to it because if I said something like that compared to a real world situation, it would baffle the person I'm talking to as well. And let me give you an example. So I sent him the address to the website. That's like having an address of a house written on a piece of paper. So I text you, it's like writing on a piece of paper, here's the address and me giving that to you and you going, I don't understand how this is an address. An address is where a house is. And it's like, no, no, no. This is a piece of paper with the address on it. And it's just like a text. Here's the text. Here's the address. The text is the address. This is the, the location. Most text applications will take that address and turn it into a link. The link is kind of like, in a vague way, the directions. So I give you a piece of paper. I write the address on there. That's, that's the address of the house. And then if I wrote directions, that would be like the link. Clicking on the link is like going through the process of following those directions to get there. See how it is? It's like, it, again, if I gave you an address on a piece of paper and you looked at me and said, I'm very confused. How can this be an address? An address is where a house is. You would look at me like I'm crazy. But at the same time, that's exactly what you're saying. I'm sending you text. It's words. That's the address of where something is. That is the address. And you're looking at me and going, I don't understand how this can be uh, an address in a text. Uh, uh, an address is the internet. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And again, when people say stuff to me, uh, when they first say it to me, I'm just like, I'm baffled by how to respond. Because you wouldn't know how to respond if, again, I give you a piece of paper with the address and you'd be like, I don't understand. This is, this is an address. An address is where a house is. This can't be an address. Um, and it's just, I get that so much. So basically, again, this message is to people who get confused by computer stuff, the wording, again, just like an address is the address to a house, the address for a website is the same thing. It's, it's the written location of where something is that corresponds to a real life uh, place where obviously, obviously on computers it's a virtual place, well, although it technically does lead to a real life server somewhere. Um, and that, that's the only real difference is the wording is the same in real life and in computers, it's just one is virtual and one is not. And virtual just means it's, it's in the, the computer, it's not a physical location. So 
Anyway, don't overcomplicate things. And again, that's what people tend to do. Another part of that conversation uh, was also when it came to me telling him to copy this address and send it to somebody, he didn't know how to copy it. And, uh, which is a valid point, but he said, I can't. He didn't say, I don't know how. He said, I can't copy texts. But you can't copy text. And he goes, nope, on an iPhone, you can't copy text. And my first response was, of course you can. But there are so many things that iPhones can't do. I stopped and said, I would think you'd be able to. I can't imagine that you can't copy text uh, and then paste it somewhere. Because... Uh, but at the same time, I can't imagine that you can't download an MP3 or an MP4 on a device, but iPhones don't let you do that. If I sent you a link to an MP3 or an MP4, you can't do that, even though a Windows 3.1 machine could do that. Um, so when he said that, I was just baffled. I'm like, again, I want to say, no, of course you can copy a text. You can co I know you you got to be able to, but at the same time, part of me is going, well, it's an iPhone. Who knows if you can do basic, rudimentary stuff that computers 30, 40 years ago could do. Um, because, of course, I went there and I did show him how to long hold on the text and click copy, which he didn't know how to long hold stuff. It's just, I, I don't know how you get through life owning, owning a phone and not knowing how to do basic stuff like that. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, on a regular desktop computer, you usually have, a, well, unless you have an Apple computer, you usually have a left and a right click on your mouse. And usually, you, you know, you click stuff with the left, and then you use a right click. In most situations, we'll bring up some sort of context menu. You click on a file with the right button, it brings up a menu of options. You right click on your desktop, and you get a menu of options. Stuff like that. On touchscreen devices, the general input, and it's been like this for over 20 years, because I worked with touchscreen stuff back in the 90s. You click with one finger, quick to touch, and that's clicking. If you click and hold for about two seconds or so, that's the equivalent of right-clicking on a desktop computer. And I'm not saying that all systems are like it, but that's, that's pretty much the standard. Um, so if you're ever looking to do something with something, try long holding it. And I was trying to tell him that, and I go, no, you just got to click and hold. And he go, instead of going click, he went, and he kept doing that. I'm like, no, hold it until the menu pops up. And it took him a couple tries, and he figured it out. And I'm not blaming somebody for not knowing something. But now he knows that. But I just, I just don't understand how you can use a device. That's like me driving my car for the last 10 years and not realizing it had headlights. It's like, ah, how do you not know that? Uh, but again, two different things. Not knowing how something works and then being confused by terminology that isn't even technology term terminology. It's real world terminology like address. Uh, it's... it's it's equivalent to the same thing in the computer world as it is in the real world. And you just need to listen to the words. Um, and sometimes even if it is somewhat technology based, it still is founded in, in well, it's English for me in whatever language you speak. And I'll give an example. I've told this story before. Similar story. Um, I'm going back 10 years, helping someone with their computer, sit down at their computer, and I said, uh, okay, uh, open your web browser, whichever web browser you use. And they said to me, looked at me, and they legitly said to me, I'm sorry, I don't understand computer terminology. I don't know what a web browser is. And I laughed because I thought he was joking. And I'm like, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome. He's like, well, why don't you just say that? And I'm like, I don't know which one you use. But even if you had never heard the term web browser before, I would hope you know what the web is and you know what a browser is. You should be able to put that together. And my comparison at the time, and I still use when I tell this story, is that's like you telling me I'm saying something about your steering wheel in your car and you not knowing what I'm talking about. But that's actually more confusing than web browser. A web browser is an application you use to browse the web. A steering wheel could be confusing on a car because I could be talking about the steering wheel, but it could also be the wheels in the car that turn when you turn the steering wheel because they're steering the car and their wheels. So saying steering wheel is more complicated than saying web browser. But obviously, in both cases, a steering wheel is a wheel of some sort that steel steers the car, and a web browser is something that's used to browse the web. It's like, even if you had never heard that term before, stop and listen to it and just use common sense. Don't go, this is a computer term, and just stop thinking. And that's what most people do. They hear it and know that it's a computer term and just go, I don't know what that means, instead of just using basic knowledge of the language they already know. So, again... Don't overcomplicate things. Keep them simple. 
Computers should be simple. If it takes more than a few steps to do something, and I'm talking like two or three steps, you're probably doing it wrong. In most cases, not 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 a uh, uh, end all be all rule, but it's a rule of thumb. Is if it takes more than a couple of steps, you're doing it the wrong way. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. Don't overcomplicate stuff. Just listening to the wording.